G'day, it's Rusty and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be making a garden sculpture and it's uh, 950 wide and it stands 1300 high. And then we're going to put some legs on the bottom so it can actually be sat in the garden. And I was contacted by a friend who showed me a photograph of a friend of hers. So, so I took the photo and I created a cut path with it by um, using Inkscape, which is a free two-dimensional uh, CAD software program. And I'll, sh I'll show you on the computer what I needed to do in order to create this cut file. So then we'll come out here on the table and we'll cut it. And uh, I'll show you how that cut looks when it turns out. Now this is actually a surprise for, for my friend's friend. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this uh, turns out. And we'll be cutting it out of three millimeter mole plate. And it's just about maxed out my table. My table has a cut area of 1330 wide, 1330 deep. And we're running it 950 by, I think it's 1303. So I have to make sure I get the metal in the right place. Start with a torch in the back corner. And uh, yeah, cross fingers and I'm sure it'll work out fine. So okay, I'll show you how we converted that um, photo to a cut file and then we'll come out here on the on the table and we'll, and we'll cut it. All right, so I've opened up Inkscape and what we're gonna do is import this photo that I was given. So if I go to import, this is the photo. Right, so this is the photo my friend gave me of her friend standing on what looks like some sort of roadside distance marker or something. And what we're gonna do with this in order to create a cut path, there's two things you can sometimes do. You can go into this path trace bitmap, but I've used that function and it, it doesn't get a nice clear picture. So the other option we have available to us is over here in the tools bar, there's a Bezier tool. Now the Bezier tool allows me to draw around this. So I'll just, just blow this up a little bit and I'll show you what, I'm, what I did. Now this is not meant to be a a tutorial on how to use Inkscape. This is just a, a brief overview of what I did to create a cut path. There's far better people who teach um, Inkscape on YouTube. So, uh, but this is what I did. So I used the Bezier tool. Let me just zoom in a little bit more here so I can see. And we just pick a spot. So we start a point here and when I click the mouse, I leave a, I leave a reference point or a node anywhere that's that's a straight line, but I can then bend that up later. So I can come around here. A little bit of poetic license with some of this shaping, but you can sort of get the picture of what I'm doing. I'll, uh, I'll go fairly quickly. I don't want to bore you with, with how I did it, because I'm sure there's people who know better ways or quicker ways of doing it than me, but, uh, this is what I did. Uh, there, down there, come down here. And you can add nodes and take them out later on once you've got your basic shape sorted. And that's, this is what I did. I then went up around here, around the shoe. And I, I will go back in and trace all this tread later, but just let me work my way around this at the moment and I'll just, I won't worry about the lace. But, uh, and I'll come back and put some detail in this knee brace because she was wearing the brace, so that's sort of a feature of hers that would sort of stand out a little bit. Out to the calf, right, sort of down to the, the shoe area here. I'll, I'll include this little tab. Now I'm going around the outside, so now I've got to go around the outside, this little concrete plinth thing she looks like to be standing on. And then the other detail I'll come and get later. And I'll add that in once I've got this outside shape. Because this outside shape is my reference point for this whole 
Well, I'll fix that up later. It's all right. So back here, up around the toe. Again, I won't worry about this lace, but I'm not going to be too concerned about the wrinkles. But again, I can just go and mark all these points of reference. Here and around up to the armpit. So the watch, because she was wearing this watch, coming out around the hand. Okay, down here, up around the watch. Forearm back to here, back into the under her chin, which we'll, we can come back and sort out a little bit later on. And then the nose. When you get back to your starting point, you'll find that it, you can see it closes in. So if I double click back on my starting point, I've now got this outline, which looks a bit, a bit sketchy. So the first thing I'll do is actually go and highlight the line and I want to change its color. So I want to go to the stroke and make it something that I can sort of visibly see, which I can. So now what I do is choose the node view which is this option here and you'll see all these little nodes are the spots where I clicked it in the first place so what I can do now is I can now take each of these segmented lines and grab a hold of it and bend it up so by bending it up I get a shape out of it and if I click the end node I'll get these little handles and the handles let me sort of move the shape around a little bit as well so I can bend that up, I can grab that and do that with it. All right, so you get the picture now, I can get a little bit of shape happening here, same with the shoulder. So I'll show you now what I ended up with and you'll see how the, the finished cut path looked. So this is the finished cut path and I'll just zoom in and show you what I mean, what I did. Now I made it grey, I greyed out the shape on the inside because I wanted to show these individual lines. These individual lines are the same, use the Bezier tool, except that just a start point here and a finish point, and I bent them round, made them white because it sort of shows what's going to be cut out. So as you can see here, now we've got some shape around the face. I've got the brand name for her hat. I've got some little detail lines, show her ear, glasses, the, the collar of her shirt. We've also got the, the wristband. Down here is that knee brace she was wearing. I did go around and trace the sole of her shoe to give it a little bit more for the detail and these little lines on her shoe. So, And then the distance numbers, there were little arrows and numbers. So anything that's white is actually going to be cut out of this um, project so these white lines just represent the circles so that's how it looked and I'll just show you the photo now I'll bring the photo back in and we'll put the photo next to it and you can see for yourself how it looks so I'll just import this photo which is this one uh, if I just stretch this a bit okay so that just gives you an idea of this is what we started with. This is the photo that I was given. Go away from her foot. And this is the cut path that we've ended up creating. And all these individual pieces are, are separate cuts. So that's what we did in Inkscape. So now we'll take this finished cut path here and we'll take it out on the table and we'll load it into the software, put some three millimeter plate onto the table and we'll cut this out. And we're running the MyPlasm CNC software and this is the cut file, I've imported it into the cut program 
and we've sized it 950 wide, 1304. So it's turned out at 1304 long. Uh, my settings over here, we're running at 1600 millimeters a minute of cut speed. Our second cut for when it goes around a corner uh, is a thousand. We're running the torch light controller on zero, which is actually in auto mode. So we're letting the software determine from the arc voltage the, the required gap between the torch and the material and we're running a 600 millisecond piercing time so because we're, we're piercing 3 mil plate uh, we need a, a chance for it to actually pierce before it moves and we're running a 30 millimeter float height so basically every time it does a cut the torch comes back up it comes up 30 millimeters and then it moves away to the next pierce point and then goes back down again so that's that's the setup all we need to do now is uh, I've told the torch it's up in this top left hand corner of the sheet and I'll just show you on the table where that is because we've got to be pretty precise because of the, the size of the plate and the size of the cut. And this is our sheet of material. This is actually a, a full sheet cut to 1330 long. So it just fits on the table. The torch is up in this way in this back corner. So that's our starting point. And we tell the torch where it is in relation to the cut path. So we're starting right up this back corner. Okay, so we've told the torch it's up in this top corner, which is that function. So we'll hit the start button. Where's it going to go? It's going to just like that I just can't quite get it all in here so yeah just like that we've got a it cut I'm really really pleased with that I'll just show you that on the table before I actually take it out I know it's a bit of discoloration from the water there but yeah those details that we put in the knee and the shoe to give it some definition the shoe there you can see that even the brand name of the hat she's wearing the watch and the glass, yeah, that come out really, really good. All right, let's get it off the table and we'll, we'll dry it and we'll get, and get it cleaned. And I've just taken it off the table and stood it up outside. So this is how it looks. I haven't cleaned it or anything. I've just taken it off and stood it up. So I'm really, really pleased with that. It looks great. And I really hope that the, uh, my friend's friend is, is going to find it as cool as I do. All right, we'll go take it inside and we'll clean it up and... Next thing to do will be to put some uh, 12 mil rod behind it and so we can have some pegs into the ground. So we'll get on and do that now after we've cleaned it. So now we've got this garden sculpture off the table, we need to add some 12 mil long uh, round bar spikes so it can stand up in the ground. So we've got 300 mil below the bottom of the sculpture and I've got 
probably 300 on the on the shorter one and the longer one that runs up behind the lady's knee goes all the way up just to give it some support because the narrowest part of that whole uh, sculpture is the area of her right knee that she's standing on so we just ran it all out there to give it a little bit more strength so we just welded those spikes on and that'll certainly give it a firm base for it to stand in the ground and that's the uh, sculpture finished now I'll just take you have a close look at it oh, uh, really really pleased with that the detail on those lines I've put in just accent what she's up to and uh, you see down here that's the spikes on the bottom so that'll go in the garden really nicely so uh, I'll let the customer know it's ready to go and they can uh, pick it up and hopefully I'll get a picture of it in the garden well I've finished this uh, garden sculpture I've delivered it to my friend and she was over the moon with it so was I uh, it come out really really well and she subsequently given it to her friend and they put it in her garden um, I've got a photo here of how it looks in her garden and she is ecstatic with it so all in all a really good project something a little bit different for me because I had to trace that photo as well so that's that, that's something we can do we can take a photo and then we can turn it into a cut file and then we can cut it on the table so if you like the video a thumbs up would be appreciated if you'd like to subscribe to the channel the subscribe buttons down here if you have any comments or queries uh, please put them in the comments below and if there's something that you don't like about the video and you give it a thumbs down I'd appreciate it if you put it in the comments what it was you didn't like because I am always trying to create better content um, if you'd like to support the channel there's a link in the description below to buy me a coffee and your help is certainly appreciated with the channel so that's it for this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one